everyone, and welcome to another great and grand venture in the conversations of horror universe. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank you all for joining me. My name is Kevin L. Powers. I'm the uh, festival director and co-program -co director for Something Wicked Film Festival and Events, and I have a great show for you today, because today I have a special guest on the show who will help me discuss the amazing vampire film, Dracula Untold. Uh, and with me today is my guest, Sonia Thompson. Thank you, Sonia, for uh, joining us today. Well, thank you for having me on. I enjoy doing this thing. <laughs> and uh, the thing is, everyone who uh, listens to the show knows that uh, vampire films aren't really my type of genre, but Dracula Untold is actually one I really enjoyed. So we're just going to jump right into this one because I want to actually talk about this movie. Uh, Sonia, because I love knowing uh, this about every person who uh, I have on the show, what was your impression of seeing this film for the first time? Well, you know, I was flipping through and came across it and I was like, huh, Dracula and Toe. To and I was like, oh my God, this is freaking amazing. I didn't, I'm surprised it didn't have more um, promotion about it, more marketing, you know, because I mean, it is a really darn good film. Yeah, yeah. Very well, good film. I think one of the reasons why is because the, uh, the, the star, Luke Evans, is still an up and coming actor. He done a lot of smaller things uh, of course even though this is a, a universal film uh vampire films haven't really come back to audiences uh favor as of yet but one of the great things about this film and i'm not a big vampire film is that i absolutely love luke evans and i actually love a lot of the stuff that he's done i think he's an amazing actor which is what drove me to see this film for the very first time <laughs> yeah well when i saw that luke was in it because i mean i loved him on the hobbit and I think he even did, um, I think he did like Three Musketeers, which is a TV show I had recently watched. And I was like, oh my God, this is really cool. I mean, I really like him a lot. He did, he did a fantastic job. So it was really cool. Well, <laughs> well, one of the things I uh, really enjoyed about the film is the fact that it wasn't your typical Dracula story um they kind of brought it into even though it's still a period film they kind of brought it into modern day um ideals you know um i actually love the way he became a vampire and of course uh how it actually drove into his character in the film <laughs> what were your thoughts on that well i really like the way that it all went about i like the way that when he went into the cave and when it it came down to what well, was kind of his desperation of saving his his village his town you know and he felt like he had no other choice and so he did this to have all the strength and he really did try and try to not drink any blood you know cuz he didn't want to stay like that he he really didn't um but the effects they did at, you know upon how you know all of a sudden he 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 tried to hold the the silver in his hand and it burned him and you know i mean it, it was just i just really liked the way they did it i i really liked the effects and then the effects in the movie were amazing i liked the way they incorporated the bats because mm -hmm. the bats were part of him yeah you know he had control over all the bats and what you know he wanted them to do and the way he moved i mean it was so freaking it was so freaking cool the way he moved through the woods so quickly it was like he was a whole bunch of bats and then all of a sudden he swirled around and then he was whole again you know it was really neat how they did everything i really liked it yeah i think one of the things that influenced the the type of action in this film was definitely the underworld films um as it took a very dark look but it was a very action-packed film um, probably more so action than it was horror. Maybe that's why I like it so much. Uh, <laughs> uh, because uh, with the exception of this film, I tend to gravitate towards vampire films that are more uh, entertaining and less of the scary type. Because I don't really, I don't really find vampires scary. I also like the more traditional ones. So like you know, Fright Night's one of my favorite of all time, and, yeah. uh, you know, Nosferatu, the original version, the, uh, um, you know, the original silent film, uh, well, I actually like the, uh, the remake, too, with uh, Klaus Kinski, uh, but the more modern-day takes of Dracula, I don't tend to like as much, 
uh, maybe because, and I know this is sacrilegious to our listeners, uh, that I'm not a very big fan of the book. Uh, I read the book when I was young, and I just didn't take to the book all that much. But that's me. That, that's just me. I don't, I'm not sure about you and how much you like Dracula films and or if you've read the Dracula book or not. I've I've read the Dracula book and I you know I I liked it pretty well, uh, but I like vampires so that makes a difference. But I I try to check out a lot of the different types of Dracula films here and there over the years and this one I just really like the way they did it because the storyline flowed very well mm-hmm. and yeah they they didn't waste so time about getting to the action stuff and no. they give and they give some kind of like factual well somewhat factual information about how you know the young boys were taken to become the army and all you know a lot of that stuff is based on some you know some factual type stuff because they would take the young men and and uh, i think it was the turks or whatever you know would um take them and and so they could train them for their armies Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that that was incorporated in this and you know all the actor. I mean, there was a lot of strong actors in this film as well, you know, and I really, really like the way, you know, he just got down to it, you yeah. know, and he, just did, he, he was ready to defend his home as people. And I think one of, one of his side, see, one of the guys had said, you know, he was talking about um, going to, he wanted to defeat him in three days mm-hmm. because you know, that's what he had was three days. And if he didn't drink any blood in three days, then he didn't become Dracula. You know, he didn't take over this, this vampire. He didn't get to stay a vampire. And uh, I, I thought it was kind of funny when, uh, when a, one of his compadres says, uh, well, uh, do it in two days and really impress us, you know? So there's a few little, uh, little, you know, lines in there like that, that, really made me giggle a little bit because i was like yeah if he only knew he probably can you know but uh i i no i liked it (laughs) i liked it a lot i think that uh luke evans actually took to the character very well and um unfortunately there won't be a sequel anytime soon that we know of but i think he really brought a lot to the character and it would have been really interesting to see what he would have done if there had been a sequel and they had actually done it in the modern day times as a as this film was had its epilogue <laughs> you know it's very possible that you know the way they ended it uh, with him being sort of in modern day times you know, and everything right there at the end that they could possibly do a second one and do something. Um, but just leaving it as it was, was fine. You know, it's one of those movies that doesn't have to have a sequel, you know, um, cause of the way they ended it, you know, because, and I don't want to give the ending away. It's like, I'm just like, Oh my God, you know, I probably already have a little bit, but well, I, I sure- like the way it ended. <laughs> I'm sure that people uh, listening have, if they haven't already seen Dracula Untold, uh, they might think they're a little bit familiar with the story. But this movie does take a lot of liberties with the Dracula story, which is actually what makes it more exciting and much more interesting than some of your more standard Dracula tales that have been done. And there are a lot of films being done right now around the Dracula myth in the book. <laughs> mm-hmm. There are. I mean, but there was, you know what I thought was cool, though, is how he took out all those, I'm sorry, my phone, I'm going to apologize on on this recording, uh, my phone rang, and it just, somebody just left me a voicemail message, and it just made noise, and I apologize, um, but I love the way he took out so many men by himself, because, mm. you know, he was told, I have the power, you know, you'll have the power of 20 men, or whatever, you know, and and he was able to just go down there and, and just take out all these people. But it was unfortunate how some of the stuff came about with um, with his son and and mm-hmm. all that and his, and his wife. But um, I just thought it was so cool. I mean, it was just like, dude, he's kicking butt here. And I mean, this is a movie. If you enjoy seeing somebody kick butt, then he kicks butt. Like I said, those uh, underworld influences are very prevalent in the movie. 
Uh, <laughs> but uh, speaking of another actor I really enjoyed seeing this film and not given enough screen time was Charles Dance, who kind of gives him the uh, the vampire powers at the beginning and turns him into Dracula or the vampire as we know him. And of course, pops up at the very end of the film again. Um, mm-hmm. I absolutely love the Charles Dance. I've loved him in his British films and Alien 3 and freaking last action hero. I just, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of Charles Dance and it was very interesting to see him in this film. I'm not sure if you're familiar with who Charles Dance is or not. Uh, not really. I, I'm not very familiar with him, but I do know which character you're speaking of and that was pretty, he did a great job. He really did. So I like Dominic C- Cooper too that played the preacher. Yeah, yeah. And, um, That was a good role. Uh, I thought it was kind of weird though how that kind of went down, like how he was suspicious of, of Dracula, because it didn't give anything leading up to why he was suspicious. Mm. You know, I thought there could have been a little bit more uh, play on that, and maybe there was, because we all, we both know how movies get edited down. We've both been in movies that got edited down, and some of the good parts are not there, and you're like, dude, that would have elevated the story, you know, but, um, but I just think that it it just felt like it just seemed kind of weird and awkward with the way how that was done because he's in that you know he's in he's hiding in the dark in the shadows a little bit but he's not being suspicious enough where the preacher should be suspicious of him oh you know what i'm saying i mean the preacher was just he just kind of like went right into it and was like watching him and then all of a sudden knew who he was that he was you know some creature and so that that was something that kind of bothered me a little bit was hmm. that you know he just could have that that happened too quickly. Ah, uh, you know what? It does feel like that. Now that you pointed out, it does feel like maybe there was something cut out where they could have uh, uh, explained that more. How he that his character gets to that point, um, but. Uh, <laughs> Bring it up underworld again. They probably were cutting out the stuff to get to the action. <laughs> probably, probably so, probably so. But it is an action-packed movie, you know. And I, I like. I don't. I get bored easy in some movies, and so I like the way that it kept. You know, you get bored. So, yeah, I get bored in some movies. <laughs> so that's interesting that you said. So, do you enjoy these faster type? uh vampire films or do you prefer something more like um uh she walks home alone at night where it's a very slow methodical vampire film no i I mean you know those are good and all because i mean you're like you you really get into it a little bit more and you can keep up a little bit more but i am one of those i mean it's like i like the faster pace because i like the action and (laughs) You know, yeah, I want a storyline. I want to be able to follow the storyline. I want there to be a good flow. But I like the action. I like I like it being fast paced, so I can. I don't know. My brain's like, oh yeah, yeah. What's next? What's next? You know, and you know, I can't. When it's going too slow, I'm like, oh, are they ever going to get there? Um, okay, well that just happened. All right, uh, come on, let's get to the good stuff. You know. <laughs> So, so that's, I really like this one because they, it, and it was so cool because all of a sudden when you think that he has won, you know, and he's defeated enough where he can, where he can, uh, my phone started ringing again. I apologize. I did not cut it off. Um, but, um, but anyway, um, yeah, it was like, just when you thought that he had won the fight or he was you know, things were going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden there was a stone thrown in and, you know, his son and them are captured, you know, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh crap, you know, why did, now why did that just happen? I mean, give him a little bit of breathing room here, you know, but, but it still went well with the pace. And it, it was one of those twists that, you know, was actually good because it was expected, but not expected so early and and he was just you know he was able to jump in and and do what he needed to do and that was really cool so um 
but I, I overall, I think it was a, I highly recommend the movie. Yeah. And I know that it's going to um, be a good hit if everybody finds out about it. I mean, I think it wasn't it just a, a Netflix original or not. I, I didn't pay attention to that. It was a theatrical film, but it didn't do well theatrically. It did okay. Uh, not enough to, to warrant a sequel of any type. Um, okay. So, uh, it, that, which is unfortunate because, I would, like I said, I would have loved to have seen a sequel. But, that, uh, but like I said, there's a lot of Dracula films being made right now, and none of them are doing well. You had The Last Voyage of the Demeter, which didn't do well. And then, of course, you had Renfield, which didn't do well. But both of those movies were really good. So I just think that um, a lot of audiences just don't want to see Dracula, and um, which is a shame because these are some... And, I'm, and like I said, I'm not a Dracula fan, yet I just mentioned three films uh, within the last five to ten years that were actually really good. Um, <laughs> and they take a different take on Dracula, all three of them. Uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, it's one of those things, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, I really want to, for people who have not seen this film, and I do want people to see this film if you haven't already seen it, because it is a good film. Um, I, I want to, I want you to let us know one of your takeaways with the film for our audience. What would you want them to get out of this film or what do you think is, you know, cause this is I, I I've been avoiding saying too much about the film for those who may not have seen it already. <laughs> I know, and I've tried not to say too much either, and then I catch myself saying certain things. But know that it's a few things in the film might not quite make sense, but at the same time, it's just very subtle things. Um, but overall, take the time, watch it. I think you'll enjoy it because it is a good twist on Dracula. It's not your typical Dracula. Uh, film and it, it's it really gives you a different perspective as to how, how he became Dracula and how it all went down and you know and it's not your him sleeping in the basement in a coffin or anything like that I mean that never happens in this hmm. never do you see that happen it, it's more of a realistic um, approach to Dracula and his his home life with his wife and his son and um you know and you know yes it's the it's the three days that he's becoming a vampire from you know where is he going to drink the blood or not drink the blood and it's really cool when he does drink the blood but it's um it's got some good twists and turns in it and there's a lot of great actors and i mean and luke luke evans is a I, I think he is just an amazing actor anyway. So that was um, one thing that I really, really enjoyed was seeing him in something else because he's got, he's, he's good. He's really good. He he really puts a lot of life to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So well, uh, my, my final thoughts, and I really, really, really can't stress this enough. Want people to, to see, seek out this film. Like most of the films that we discuss on conversations in horror, there are films that I know everyone has seen, and there are films that are more of the cult films where not everyone has seen. And because this movie did not make a lot of money at the box office, we're always hoping that it becomes a cult film, even though you know we may never see a sequel, although it does deserve one. So <laughs> with that, I would like to thank my guest, Sonia, for joining me on this uh, amazing adventure of discussing Dracula Untold. And for all you listeners out there, I would like for you to seek out this uh, film. Uh, also seek out some of our previous episodes. We have lots of them. And surprisingly, we've done more than our fair share of vampires already. <laughs> uh, also, make sure to check us out on social media and uh, other other places out there, our websites and everything, you can find us everywhere. Uh, don't forget to check us out on YouTube and support uh, what we do here. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today and have a pleasant day. Thanks for having me on. Conversations in Horror is a Broken Lighthouse Pictures production, produced by Kevin L. Powers, executive produced by Kelly A. Inoka, and originally filmed via Zoom technology. Conversations in Horror is hosted by Kevin L. Powers and co-hosted by various horror film lovers and filmmakers. 
To learn more about Mr. Powers, please make sure to check out his Patreon page and other social media platforms. Conversations in Horror is copyright 2024, Broken Lighthouse Pictures Production.